All right. Welcome everybody to our pre-camp webinar for Northeast Session 1 on Long Island coming up on July 15th and 16th. We're going to go over a quick agenda for the evening. First, we're going to go over a couple introductions from our team members, and then we're going to talk about how to prepare for camp from a schedule and logistics standpoint, the format of camp, um, and also how to approach it from a recruiting standpoint before jumping into a live Q&A to get all your questions answered this evening as well. First up, some quick introductions. Thanks, Max. Hello, everybody. My name is Corey Spera, and I run the operations for Head First Honor Roll Camps. I'm actually an Honor Roll alumni. I attended camp back in 2009 and 2010, and then from camp had the pleasure of getting recruited and then attending Lafayette College, uh, where I played for four years and uh, was the team captain for the back half of my career. Thank you, Corey. And my name is Max McKenna. I'm our senior manager of product marketing here at Head First. Um, I also played college baseball, graduated from Amherst College in 2011, where I played baseball for four years, then went into teaching and coaching at the high school level, first as a teaching fellow and assistant baseball coach at Phillips Andover up in Massachusetts, and then at a small private school outside New York City called the Master's School. Another voice and face that you'll hear and see a lot at camp is Brendan Sullivan. Brendan is our the founder and president of the Head First Companies. Um, he graduated from Stanford where he played baseball in 1996. A tremendous playing career there, played in the Cape League, ended up being drafted in the 26th round by the Padres where he played up to AAA. Um, and then during the off season, during his pro career, started Head First as uh, pitching lessons and then grew it into the showcase uh, portion that it is today. Another face that you'll be introduced to uh, at camp is our camp advisory partner, Diamond College Advisory Team, or as we call them, DCAT. DCAT is a college advisory program for specifically high academic baseball and softball players who are looking to maximize not only their on-field but also their in-classroom academic options at the college level and really leverage these different options to find the best fit, which is something you'll hear us talk a lot about at camp. We'll be joined by Justin Kronk. Justin is the DCAT founder and executive director, former full-time member of our Head First team here in D.C. He was a two-sport athlete also at Amherst College where he played football and baseball, then went into college coaching for a handful of years at Amherst College, then at BC, uh, head coach at Shenandoah and UNC Asheville. Um, tremendous resource on the recruiting process that you'll be introduced to and certainly hear from uh, at camp as well. And now we're going to talk about the format of the two days and uh, what to expect. Corey? Fantastic. Thanks, Max. And would love to uh, start with just some uh, some basics here. Um, some pretty important uh, where and when. Of course, the camp's going to be at Baseball Heaven. Um, that's located in Yapank, New York on Long Island. Camp's going to be Monday and Tuesday, July 15th and 16th. We're going to get going with our check-in at 7 a.m. 7 to 7.30 is going to be our check-in block. Uh, we always appreciate folks showing up nice and early, um, especially if they want to beat some traffic. Totally understood, but we will not start that check-in process until 7 a.m. The programming for the event will start approximately at 7.40 a.m. We're going to begin with an all-camp meeting at 7.40 want to take a second to check out this overhead view of Baseball Heaven. Um, you can see here in the top left there are some small fields and then in the middle of the screen there are four 90-foot sort of standard size baseball fields that we're going to be using for our event. There's that red arrow that is pointing inward from the parking lot. There is an entrance there. We're going to be shuttling everyone through that entrance. They're going to be folks in red shirts that are part of our head first team who are going to be spread throughout the complex in the morning pointing you in the correct direction we're going to be pushing you through that entrance to where that red x is that's where our check-in tables are going to be players will get their jerseys there as well from there we're going to have folks go uh, down the pathway you see fields two and three labeled there there's a nice big walkway between them we'll head down there Take a 90 degree left turn to go between fields one and two, um, and that's where players will put their bags. There are some stands where we'll have players sit for that morning meeting that I just mentioned. 
Once we finish that morning meeting at 740, we're going to release the players to stretch. They'll go with our head first staff to get nice and loose and rock and rolling for the rest of the day. At that time, there's going to be a parents only meeting that's going to be hosted by Brendan, who's the president of our company, who Max just introduced. Uh, Brendan's going to be able to uh, give parents a little bit better of an idea in more detail of what's going to be going on over the course of the next two days um, and certainly answer any questions that folks might have as well. Once we get players all stretched out, we're going to start the camp with our defensive showcase. Defensive showcase, each player is going to be able to showcase at one position in front of all the college coaches. Um, important note there, they're going to be able to showcase at one position. Um, so if you are an outfielder and a catcher, you have to pick um, one of those positions to showcase at. Also worth noting that we don't really care what position the players showcase at. Uh, even if you're registered as an outfielder and a catcher, but you would like to showcase at middle infield, that is no problem with us. You are more than welcome to do so. Um, however, you can only showcase as a middle infielder. Um, so each group of players, each position group, is going to get to showcase in front of the college coaches on our main showcase field. Um, but there are also going to be other things going on at that time. Players are going to have the opportunity to be on the prep field before they ever get to the showcase field to make sure that they're nice and loose. And if their infielders get ground balls and throws uh, before they have to do so in front of the college coaches. We're also going to be taking some objective assessments, things like overhand velocity, as well as 60 yard dash time. For our pitcher onlys out there, we also have some programming for you all. You'll be able to take part in our pitcher power profile, um, which basically is an athletic assessment for pitchers. Um, not to worry, it does not involve any type of throwing a baseball. We want to keep pitchers um, nice and fresh for their outings later on in the day, um, but there will be an opportunity for them to get some assessments taken on them since they will not participate in um, you know, a defensive showcase in front of the college coaches. Once we finish that defensive showcase, we'll roll right into our offensive showcase and players are going to hit in the same groups that they defensively showcased in. So if you showcase as a catcher, you'll hit with the rest of the catchers. Uh, you, players will do that, again, in front of every single college coach in attendance. And much like that defensive showcase, we'll be taking some objective assessments there as well, namely the exit velocity uh, of each player in attendance. That's going to take up the better part of our morning at camp. And in the afternoon of day one, we're going to start with our simulated games. So once we check in every player in the morning, members of our team are going to get to work on assigning players to teams. We like to wait until we see every player who's checked in um, to make our teams um, so that we can ensure a balanced roster for every single team in uh, every single team that's going to play such that every player in attendance um, is guaranteed that even playing time by position. Um, on day one, we're going to play one nine inning game. And on day two, we're going to play two six inning games. And these games are designed to facilitate action and maximize opportunities for the players. Um, so we've got a few different rules that we impart in these games uh, to make sure that that happens. As you can see there, Things like having the batting order run continuously so that there's not a leadoff hitter. Um, if the fifth batter ends the first game, the second game will start with the sixth batter. Um, and as I mentioned before, you know, we make these teams to ensure and, and maximize playing time. So we're not going to put eight shortstops on one team. We're going to make sure that those positions are balanced out across all the teams at camp. Um, there are some other rules as well that you will hear about once you're on site, but just to name a few, you know, we uh, always play like there are less than two outs, um, such that you're always in a position to turn a double play if you get that opportunity. Um, and we only hit um, six batters per inning. So we don't play a one, two, three inning. Um, six batters hit every inning, whether they all get hits, all get out. Um, so rules like that, that again, we'll explain in more detail uh, once we see everyone on site. 
So once we play that nine inning game on day one, that's it. That is all for the programming. And we'll look at what we're going to be doing on day two. Day two, the majority of the time we'll be on site is going to be dedicated to games. As I mentioned earlier, each team is going to play in two six inning games on day two. The arrival time depends on your team assignment. We're going to have two sets of games on day one. So a group of teams will play first and then a group of teams will play second. If you're in that first group, you'll have a slightly earlier arrival on day one, if you're in that, or on day two, excuse me. And if you were in that second group on day one, you'll have a slightly later arrival. There will be some additional programming on day two in addition to those games. First and foremost, there's going to be a panel question and answer. Um, that's going to be strictly for parents, and it's going to be about the recruiting process. It's going to be hosted by Max, who's my co-host of this webinar, as well as Justin Kronk. Uh, Justin Kronk runs Diamond College Advisory Team. Max introduced him earlier. You'll get to meet Justin on site. It's going to be a great opportunity to hear from some folks who are very well versed in this space, um, and we're going to do that panel twice. It's going to happen between each set of teams first game on day two. That timing will be communicated to you on site um, on day one. And it'll also be on our mobile site, which you'll hear a lot about um, once you guys get to camp. Uh, there's also going to be an all camp meeting that's led by our head first staff. Uh, but that meeting is going to take place before each team's second game, such that um, after you finish your second game, whether you're in the first group of teams that plays or the second group of teams that plays, there will be no programming afterwards. We certainly encourage you to hang around if you'd like to, interact with us, interact with the college coaches. Um, but by all means, once that second game is over on day two, you are more than welcome to take off. Uh, we know that many of you have flights to catch and, and uh, travel to take care of. Um, so camp will end by 5 p.m. Last pitch will uh, take place no later than 5 p.m. A couple notes um, about uh, equipment at Baseball Heaven. Baseball Heaven is an all-turf facility, and that includes the pitching mounds. Uh, metal spikes are permitted, though. Um, you are more than welcome to wear those if you feel comfortable with them. From our experience, uh, for the years that we've been at Baseball Heaven, we do recommend turf shoes or molded or rubber spikes. Uh, we find that players who wear those um, generally are the most comfortable. Um, and especially for pitchers, we certainly recommend um, turf shoes uh, or some type of, you know, hardy sneaker, if you will, that's going to be able to stand up, uh, you know, throughout the pitching motion. But even with uh, uh, any type of cleat, those mounds can get a little slippery. Uh, so we definitely recommend a turf shoe type of shoe um, for pitchers. Um, and then also just a quick note on bats and helmets. Um, we are going to provide helmets in each dugout. Uh, certainly we know that players prefer to bring their own and use their own, um, and that's totally fine. We also know that some of you might be traveling from very, very far away, and maybe uh, you know packing that helmet was just not realistic. Um, so we will have those available for players if they um, choose to, to use ours and, and not bring their own. Um, also, just a quick note about bats, um, those, those should meet uh, the current high school regulations. Um, they can be BB core. Certainly players are allowed to use wood. We're not a wood bat showcase. We do know that some players use wood in their high school leagues. So by all means, if that's what they're most comfortable with, they are more than welcome to use them. However, we do encourage that, uh, that players use metal bats if they have them, since all of the college uh, programs um, that are in attendance at our camps uh, will be using those um, during their regular seasons. Thank you, Corey. Now we're going to talk a bit about how to prepare for camp from the recruiting standpoint, from the college coach engagement perspective as well. So you see there, when we think about college coach engagement through the head first platform, we think about it in three separate phases. There's the before camp, the at camp, and the after camp. The before camp, you know, between now and 7 a.m. on July 15th, 
that is a really important piece to lay some groundwork, a really important time frame to lay some groundwork with the college coaches that you are uh, interested in, the, the college programs that you are thinking about pursuing that fit your school list. So what I encourage players to do between now and the start of camp, take a look at the list of, of programs that will be joining us on Long Island and start to evaluate what the qualities of these schools are, if you haven't already, and start to compare them to the list of qualities that you are looking for in your college experience. You know, big school, close to home, small school, far away, what division of baseball are they playing? What's their program look like? Kind of start to suss out which schools that will be in attendance offer the right qualities that could be the, a really good fit for you at the college level, and start to lay some email groundwork with them. Reach out before camp and say, Hey, Coach Spira, I'm really interested in Lafayette. My name is Max McKenna. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and I would, I'm would i really excited to meet you at camp, X, Y, or Z, and, and kind of lay some of that groundwork. This can help put you on a coach's radar, specifically with schools that you are interested in. A couple points on this, though. One is don't necessarily expect to hear back from these coaches before camp starts. They're in the, the midst of a busy recruiting season themselves, and so they might be coming directly to our event from a tournament or a showcase on the West Coast or in the Midwest or in Texas. They are traveling all over, and so they don't necessarily have time to reply to each and every email that they get, but they are reading and filing and processing these emails in a way that if you send them an email and then you talk to them on site, they're likely to have read your email and we'll be putting a face to a name, a face to a, uh, that kind of groundwork introduction uh, that you already gave to them. And so it can really help set the stage for conversations while you're at camp. So if you don't hear back from coaches, don't despair. They are reading them. They might just not have the opportunity to reply before camp starts up, but it forms a really good basis for introduction once you're on site at baseball heaven. The other thing here is I think that it's really important that players limit their outreach to schools that they are genuinely interested in. These coaches talk and they want to see personalized emails. So a mass email to all 70 plus coaches that will be attending camp, while it might put you on a few extra radars, it also could uh, come across as disingenuous or uh, that you blasted all of the, the coaches in attendance rather than personalizing this outreach and personalizing each and every touch point with these coaches to demonstrate that you are genuinely and truly interested in their program specifically to lay that groundwork. The next phase is the at camp piece. Camp is a two day experience where it is a really unique opportunity that you have to engage with college coaches. And so you see bullet point number one there, engage, engage, engage. Use these two days where you have this unique access and, and, and really unique opportunity to talk face to face with coaches to have a lot of these converse, conversations. And we'll talk about some of the uh, details and, and kind of ways to start these conversations a bit later on as well. But really use this time. These coaches are on the fields, they are in the dugouts, they are interacting with players over the course of the two days. And so it's a really, really good opportunity to talk to them face to face, get to know them, get direct instruction from these coaches who are making their living coaching the game that, that you guys all love. So use this to get better at baseball and, and really access this instruction, but also give coaches a sense of your character and who you are as a holistic student athlete beyond just who you are on your transcript or who you are at the plate. Um, giving them a sense of your character can really help your recruiting process move forward with these programs as well. And then a, a note here, if you are a little more introverted or a little bit shy or a little bit hesitant to start these conversations, I would say take advantage of us, of our, our red shirt army, as we call, it, uh, call ourselves when we're on site. We offer a lot of support to student athletes to start these conversations, whether it's an introduction or a few bullet points about what to talk about or help finding a coach, whatever the case may be. Use us as a resource while you're on site over the course of these two days to start the conversations that can help advance your recruiting. And then again, as I mentioned, these conversations don't necessarily need to be all that intimidating because you don't have to you see here, you know, a player talking to Bobby Perez. You don't have to chase Bobby Perez across across the complex and say, coach, I'm really interested in Emory. Am I going there right now? Um, the way that the camp is formatted is meant to enable a lot of organic interaction around the game of baseball for players when they're 
on the field, when they're in the dugout, um, between games, coaches are roaming the complex. And so there's a lot of organic opportunities for these things to start up. So you don't need to necessarily chase a coach, uh, you know, across the complex and, and really force these conversations. They can rise very organically. A key part that you see that the next part is this after camp follow up. This is a key piece and it's one that I, I sometimes see a lot of student athletes neglect. An honorable camp is not just a two day experience during which you meet a coach, you play in front of them, you talk to them, and then you commit to their to their program, right? It's a two day platform that provides a touch point during the recruiting process. And a key piece of this is leveraging this two day experience after camp to find continued success and to continue to move your recruiting process further along at the schools that you're interested in. A lot of this is going to be done through proactive communication and following up with the coaches that you're able to connect with while you're on site. Um, during that day two panel, Justin and I will certainly talk about how key this proactivity is. But before we ever uh, get on site, I just want to make sure that players and parents have an idea of how important this post camp communication and follow up can be uh, in the recruiting process. You see here a sample list of just some of the 70 plus schools that will be joining us. Um, we love putting this out here. We, we believe very firmly in the, the strength of this list, but more than anything, what I want to highlight here is the variety of different experiences uh, that this camp can, can help open, open up for you at the next level. You see here a lot of schools. These are a lot of great schools that offer incredible opportunities. They are also very different from each other. Amherst and Middlebury, both in the NESCAC, both offer incredible baseball and academic experiences, both very different from each other. Cornell and Harvard, both in the Ivy League, both incredible academic institutions and offer some great Division I baseball, very different from each other. So as you're thinking through and looking at the college coach list, keep in mind not just the total volume or you know, be overwhelmed by the volume of coaches that will be there, but start to think about which of the schools and what type of experience you are looking for in college on the baseball side and more importantly on the academic side to start to formulate your plan of attack once you're on site uh, on Long Island as well. Max, thank you very much. Just want to take a quick moment to, uh, to talk about some NCAA uh, legislation. So last spring, in the spring of 2018, uh, the NCAA passed some legislation aimed at curbing um, early commitments um, in many sports, um, not just baseball, but baseball certainly included. Uh, this is legislation that many of our partner programs and us included. Uh, find to be very, very helpful, but it does have some uh, effects on camp that we want to lay out here. Uh, essentially, what the rule states is that if you have not completed September 1st of your junior year, then you may not have a recruiting conversation with a Division I college coach. Um, so let's unpack that a little bit, and I want to unpack it in two main um, main groups. So first, our class of 2020, which are our rising seniors. You have completed September 1st of your junior year. This means that you are eligible to have these in-person recruiting conversations with college coaches. So you're able to talk with Coach Dixon from Lafayette about why you're a great fit for that school and Coach Dixon can reciprocate and tell you why he thinks you're a great fit for Lafayette and why you should pick that over your other options. You're able to have those, quote, recruiting conversations. To make this a little bit easier for coaches and players alike, we are going to give members of the class of 2020 a black headfirst wristband that's going to be given to you when you check in at camp on Monday morning. Um, and this is basically just going to let everybody know that you are a member of the class of 2020 and can have those recruiting conversations with Division I college coaches. Um, by all means, if you are not a wristband wearing player, that is totally fine. Um, you do not have to wear it. You're not required to wear it during games. What we do ask is that after games, in between games, when a lot of that interaction is going to take place with college coaches, when you're going to have the opportunity to have those recruiting conversations, we ask that you slip that wristband on, uh, again, just to make it a little bit easier on everybody 
in, uh, in attendance. Now, for the members of the class of 2020 and younger, you know, you just can't talk to college coaches, right? No, no, absolutely not. Couldn't be further from the truth. Um, but what can you talk about, right? What can you talk about if you're not allowed to have those recruiting conversations? Well, certainly we think that there are three categories that you certainly should talk about. Um, first and foremost, introducing yourself. There is nothing, no rules against that. You should go up to those Division One schools that you're interested in introduce yourself, exchange pleasantries, um, get to know that coach without having a recruiting conversation. Uh, also, coaches are going to be on the field, in the dugouts throughout the games. Use them, use them as a resource. Max was talking about what, you know, what a unique opportunity it's going to be, uh, you know, to be around all of these college coaches at camp and how you really want to get the most out of it. Use it from, uh, you know, a, a in-game baseball experience as well. Uh, if there's a coach in your dugout and you're standing next to him and watching the game and there's a really interesting play that happens, ask them, ask them what they thought about it. Ask them how they would have handled it or how they would have liked their players in their program to handle it had they um, you know, encountered that situation in one of their own games. And then certainly, and, and, and you know, all of these are important, but maybe this, this could be the most, use them for your own development and your own improvement as a baseball player. They're, again, they're gonna be on the field. They're gonna be in the dugout. They're gonna be around in between games. There are just so many opportunities to speak with these coaches um, who are all you know, so talented, not only from a recruiting standpoint, but from a teaching standpoint. This is what they love to do. And if you have a coach who was in your dugout who saw you know, all three, four of your at-bats during your game on Monday, um, and you, know, you had a couple good at-bats, a couple bad at-bats, Ask them, ask them about it. Ask them about what they saw. Hey, what did you see, you know, on my double to right field versus that strikeout that I had in the sixth inning, right? Use it as an opportunity to uh, to help better yourself as a ball player. Um, one important note here, uh, again, this is for division one schools. Division three schools, there is not this legislation, okay? This legislation does not apply. So if you're a member of the class of 2021 or younger, you are totally fair game to have recruiting conversations with division three college coaches, just not division one schools. A couple of other quick notes. We've partnered with a company called On Peak. On Peak um, is a third party hotel provider. Basically they go out and wherever we're hosting camps, they try to negotiate the best rates with the area hotels. By no means are you required to uh, book through On Peak, but we do have those rates available to you all if you're interested and still need a place to stay for the upcoming camp. You can find that information on our website. Go ahead and uh, click on the Enrolled Athletes tab at the top of the page. If you scroll down to Travel and Accommodations for Baseball um, and go to the New York section of that page, you'll be able to find all the information on the On Peak Hotels. Another quick note about our um, video provider at camp, Next Pro. Next Pro offers a pretty unique product. They record and tag every single pitch from every single at bat at camp to all college coaches. So they've got video uh, cameras that are focused on the pitcher and on the batter of every single field. That footage is then taken and it's spliced and cut and tagged to each individual batter and pitcher that took part in that at bat. So what you get in the end is a database that is searchable by player that has every single one of their pitches and or hits um, or swings, pitches that they, that they see at the plate um, that is cut and tagged to them such that the college coaches who receive access to this database after camp can go in, search for a player and watch all of their pitching and or hitting footage from that camp. Uh, Next Pro also has a, um, a, uh, a camera angle that takes the entire game from sort of a bird's eye view from foul territory. Um, that camera takes full game footage and gets all of the defense as well, which is also accessible. Um, important note here, not only is it accessible to the college coaches, but Players can take this video home as well. If you haven't received an email from NextPro yet, you certainly will. 
in the near future and after camp, um, you're able to purchase different packages with them such that you can get your uh, access to your footage. Um, Next Pro will also professionally make a highlight video of the plays that you'd like to see. Um, so if you're a pitcher and a hitter and you had, you know, six strikeouts over the course of the two days as a pitcher um, and had three doubles, um, but a couple of strikeouts at the, at the plate as well, you're able to pick and choose and tell which plays you want Next Pro to put in a highlight video for you. Awesome. Thank you, Corey. And now we're going to transition into the live Q&A portion of the evening. So a couple questions have come in. I know a, a handful of you have found that questions tab. To send us a question, you just uh, over in the GoToWebinar toolbar, there's a little questions tab. Type it in there, press send. We will either be replying, I'll, I'll phrase the question out to either myself or Corey um, uh, to address it live now, or we might address it via chat directly with you if it's something that's a little bit more one-off or more more specific to your student athlete. Um, if you don't have time now and you need to get about your evening, this is not not your only time to, to get your questions answered. If you have to leave, just drop your question in and we will follow up with you in the next couple days uh, to make sure that you have an answer as well. Also, before we dive straight in, um, if you have questions, you know, anytime between now and when camp starts, find our website. You see our, there our email and our phone number on the screen. Always feel free to ping us at either of those and let us know. Or if you find on our website, uh, we have a live chat feature as well. So you can always uh, certainly drop a note in there and we'll be able to get back to you shortly. First question, Corey, and this is one that you know is common. Food on site. How do we manage lunch? What's lunchtime like? What is food access like for student athletes uh, to make sure that they can fuel up for these for the baseball action? A very, very important question, Max. And thank you for asking. I'm sure several people had that question. Um, first and foremost, a, a couple notes here. Um, you are more than welcome to bring any drinks, any food into the facility. There is not a gate fee. There's not someone out there who is keeping you from bringing a cooler in. Everything is fair game. We will provide water in every dugout for the players. Um, so there's always going to be water accessible to them. We do not provide Gatorade or other drinks. So if you're interested in, um, in any of those, please pack a cooler, bring that with you, keep that with you players. Um, in terms of food and timing, there is going to be an opportunity for every, uh, as, as you all probably remember, um, you know, players in the morning of day one are going to be rotating around in their um, positional groups for both the defensive showcase and the offensive showcase. And there's going to be time for each positional group to eat. We will communicate that to you on site. If your ball player chooses to showcase as an outfielder, there's going to be a set time where they're going to be able to uh, to grab some food. We'll sort of give you an idea of what that time looks like beforehand so that if you parents, uh, family members would like to get some food in advance so that it's ready for the players. Um, once that uh, once their break comes along, you will be able to do that. Plenty of options off site. We actually um, will give you a program when you check in within that program. We'll let you know of a couple places, uh, you know, within a mile of the facility where you can run over and, uh, and get some food. But there is food available on site as well. There's going to be a small snack bar with a couple of options that's in the center of those four fields we'll be hosting the, uh, the camp at. And then near the entrance where you'll come in Monday morning, there's also the Baseball Cafe, which is run by our friend Joe over at Baseball Heaven. Joe is hard at work all day from the moment that you get there at 7 a.m. till the moment that uh, many of you will leave Monday night. Joe's cooking up breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Got a lot of options out there. Um, so if you'd like to stay on site um, and just grab something from the baseball cafe, that is, uh, you know, you're certainly encouraged to do so. Absolutely. Uh, next question in the game. So we talked a little bit about kind of team assignments and the rotations. Who sets the positional assignments and rotations? And then how do we kind of balance those those teams? Are they by, are they by age? Are they by kind of where we assess these players? Um, so short answer on the team assignments. We balance them purely by, as Corey mentioned, primary and secondary position. 
Um, we go into the day with draft teams with everything well balanced. Then we account for any last minute changes or uh, kids who, you know, last minute cancellations uh, who aren't able to make it. And we balance the team so that every team has as close to humanly possible the same number of primary and secondary middle infielders and primary and secondary outfielders and first basemen and catchers to make sure that everybody is able to get the maximum number of innings during that game play. We then turn these rosters over to the coaches um, as well as guidelines for how many innings defensively a primary position player should be playing and a secondary position player should be playing at that position. And then they set those lineups in the dugouts before the games. Um, Typically, this equals out to, for most other most position players, three innings per game at your primary position and at least one at your secondary. This will oftentimes be more, but that three or one split is kind of what we what we pass along to coaches as the guidelines, and then they set those uh, defensive rotations in the game. Corey, question I'm gonna I'm gonna toss over to you. Will there be a schedule for where coaches are at any given moment so that players can find Coach Decker from Harvard to make sure that they're able to have that conversation uh, since they're interested in, in joining the Crimson? That is an awesome question. And short answer is yes, there will be. Um, a, a little bit more detail, much like players, families will receive a matrix of teams and fields and when each team is playing on which field, we will provide you with a very similar looking schedule for the college coaches. We put all of the college coaches into coaching groups and much like there are two sets of teams that play in that early game slot and that later game slot, we also have sort of two sets of college coaches. Um, so while one set of college coaches is going to be assigned to each field um, and be on the field, in the dugouts, um, maybe doing a pitching evaluation behind home plate. That other set of coaches is going to just be off. They're going to be roaming for that set of games such that they can bounce around the facility and check out all the players that they'd like to see. Um, we have all of this information in a document that will be accessible to you on that mobile site that you'll hear a bunch about once you get to camp. So you'll be able to know um, where, you know, Coach Decker is supposed to be um, on, uh, you know, game two of day one. You'll be able to see that, hey, he might be on field two as a field instructor. Absolutely. And, and two notes on this. One is the mobile site. We will send out the day before camp uh, an, uh, a short note that just has some last minute information, you know, a reminder of stuff that you will have heard before, and also a link to that mobile site so that you're able to find that. And then, as Corey mentioned, it will be in the program. We'll talk about it a lot on site. And that is really where we will keep families uh, at Baseball Heaven up to date on what's going on. The other thing that I'll tack on is at any given time, as Corey mentioned, half the coaches are roaming. If a coach you are looking for is roaming, they are wearing some of their branded apparel. They hopefully should be pretty easy to find. If you cannot track down a specific coach, let us know and somebody in a red shirt can certainly uh, help you find, find them as well because we kind of are used to some of the patterns of behavior and we might know that that Coach Decker, or Coach Perez have specific things when they're not assigned to a field, they tend to I don't know, be behind field four or be uh, next to a dugout. Um, so you can always ask us and we're happy to help you find them as well. Um, next question is about pitcher inning expectations. How do we set them? How many should pitch, How many innings should pitchers expect to throw on each day? And then kind of the, the pitcher only breakdown as well. For primary pitchers, whether that's a pitcher only or a, a primary pitcher who also plays a secondary position, you will be uh, assigned to throw one or two innings on day one, and then you will be assigned two innings on, on day two as well. What we do is we check in with pitchers on the morning of both days. So when you check in on day one, if you're a pitcher, you'll go through, you'll check in, you'll get your jersey, and then we'll send you to our pitching coordinator who will check in and just say, Hey, Corey, how's the wing feel? Are you up for one or two innings today? And if your arm's feeling a little tight, you say, you know what? one today and then I'll be good for tomorrow or like, yep, I'm good for two and we'll check in with you on that day. You'll throw those innings on day one. 
And then on day two, when you arrive, when each set of teams arrives, we'll have our pitching coordinator out by the front entrance to, again, check in with all the pitchers. We'll have drafted innings set, and we'll say, hey, Spira, you're set to throw innings three and four of your team's first game. And Corey will say, great, I feel, I feel great, up for it, locked and loaded, ready to go. So you'll get those inning assignments on the morning of day two, just because in the event that an arm is feeling tight or not quite up to it, we want to confirm those innings and, and not confirm Corey to throw two or three innings when he says, you know what, I'm really only feeling one. We take uh, young arm health very seriously, uh, which is why we assign the innings the way we do, and also why we check in with pitchers uh, upon arrival so we can make sure that they feel comfortable and safe and secure with the innings that they're going to get on the mound. Um, Corey, interesting question that I don't necessarily know the answer to. Wi-Fi and access. We're talking about a mobile site. We're talking about finding information about it. Is there Wi-Fi for parents at Baseball Heaven? That is a great question, Max. Um, from my experience, um, there is, I believe, some Wi-Fi available, especially if you're near the baseball cafe. I believe there is a public Wi-Fi network that you can access. I do not believe we have had too much success with it in the past in terms of connection. So I know there will be some parents who are looking to get some, some work done. Um, by all means, we encourage you to do so. And there are some shady spots and uh, indoor spots that you can find at Baseball Heaven to, uh, to get that done. However, I would not bank on um, having you know, reliable Wi-Fi available um, at, uh, at the facility unless you bring it um, yourself with, uh, with your own hotspot. Um, but, uh, but yes, great question. And, uh, and, and I would, would not plan on being able to, uh, to access that Wi-Fi. Seems totally fair. Um, one question that I'll, that I'll touch on then, Corey, if you feel free to jump in. Mm -hmm. Some boys are traveling alone. We're, we're dropping players off um, and then, you know, have to, it's a Monday and Tuesday, going to drop players off and then I got to go to work. Um, <laughs> if you don't, if these players don't have an adult on site, are they at a disadvantage in talking to coaches or is there plan, kind of what is the role of parents at camp? And to address the explicit question, will players without parents to back them up be disadvantaged in talking with coaches? I do not believe so at all in the slightest, no for two reasons. One, and this is something that you'll hear from us a lot while we're on site, is that these conversations with college coaches really should be initiated by the players. These coaches are gonna spend four years with the student athletes themselves and mom and dad, they're gonna, they're gonna talk to you, they're gonna love your support for four years while your son's in their program, but they wanna have these conversations with players directly. And so it is important that, especially these first touch points, be directly with the player. So in terms of initiating those conversations, we put that onus on players directly. The second piece of this is, you know, in terms of in locus parentis, our red shirts are happy to provide support and encouragement and help players come up with the, you know, the script to go talk to Coach Perez or what questions they should ask about Harvard or about Columbia to make sure that they're on the right track. So we are more than happy to equip student athletes with some of these talking points, as well as the uh, support and encouragement that they need to make sure. Because again, we do believe that pursuing these conversations and laying this face-to-face -face groundwork with coaches is a really important part of the recruiting process and also a hallmark uh, of the camps that we offer as well. There will be some, as, as we mentioned in the two-day overview, there will be some parent-specific programming. That meeting on day one, we're talking about a little bit about kind of the process and, and what it looks like and what to expect over the two days. And then that day two panel and Q&A with Justin and myself, we talk explicitly about the recruiting process. Um, and parents are more than welcome. We, we love having parents on site, but they certainly... Uh, will not put a student athlete at a disadvantage if they are unable to join. We know that that mom and dad, you guys have a lot going on, just as just as your ball players do, and and might have other places to be as well. Corey, question on team breakdown. We talked about the positional breakdown. How many hitters are we looking at on each team, and how does that play into at bats, et cetera? Yeah, we're looking at about you know ten to twelve hitters per team. Um, of course, we're going to have some pitcher onlys in there as well. Um, so you could see sort of as many as 15 players 
um, per team. But specifically for that batting rotation, um, we're looking at, uh, at about 10 to 12 hitters, which given um, how we structure our games, as I mentioned, with six batters per inning, um, you're looking at quite a few at bats um, you know, for, for each game, um, which, uh, which works out nicely from an exposure standpoint for each player. Absolutely. It's, you know, over the course of the 21 innings of baseball, it's a lot of baseball over the course of two days and which translates to a lot of defensive and, and at bat opportunities, certainly as well. Um, quick question I'm going to address. Question came in. Great question. Should parents bring chairs? Um, you are certainly more than welcome to, to bring your own seating. Um, there is a lot of seating available at baseball heaven behind the backstops, down the left field lines. There's a lot of kind of stadium seating. Now, if you want to bring your, your own, I've seen some of those chairs with the canopy that look like they have the built-in cooler. You are more than welcome to, and those things look awesome. Um, but there also is certainly a lot of seating available to watch the games. Um, so you don't, don't need to, but if you'd like to, you're, you're more than welcome to. Corey, how does the defensive showcase work if you're a primary pitcher, secondary first baseman, or, you know, primary pitcher, secondary pitcher, and, and play a defensive position? What would you advise players to do during that uh, defensive showcase rotation? Yeah, good question, Max. And, and, and we get some people who, um, you know, are sort of those true two-way players, and they hear about that pitcher programming, and they say, oh, man, you know, I am I going to be missing something, right? Am I going to be missing this sort of pitcher power profile opportunity if I showcase at my position? What we recommend to players, if they have a desire, whether they consider themselves a primary pitcher, you know, secondary outfielder, first baseman, et cetera, or vice versa, um, and they consider themselves sort of a primary position player and a secondary um, pitcher, if you have any desire to pursue an opportunity of playing a position at the next level, you should participate in the defensive showcase. This pitcher power profile is really designed for pitcher onlys who will not have the opportunity to participate in the defensive showcase. We do not do a uh, you know bunt defense pitcher showcase or something where we get the pitchers out there doing some defensive work. This is namely because we don't want them throwing. We don't want those players who are truly pitcher only to be throwing. We want them to remain fresh. Um, if you are a player who wants to pursue something at the next level in the field, you should 100% take part in that defensive showcase. You're going to be in front of every single college coach in attendance when you're doing that defensive showcase. The PPP, the pitcher power profile, was designed such that the pitcher only who will not get to be in front of every college coach for the defensive showcase um, have an opportunity to do something extra um, that will you know, still add to their recruiting process. However, nothing can replace being in front of all of those college coaches and uh, showcasing defensively. So we recommend, regardless of your sort of primary, secondary designation, um, you should absolutely take part in that defensive showcase. Uh, one question that I'll address uh, in a bit of a roundabout way, but I promise I'll get there. Is there a formal process per, for providing feedback to players? Um, one thing on this, as Corey mentioned in that, that two-day overview, we do collect a lot of objective measurements, as we call them objective measurements, on student-athletes over the course of the two days. We take 60-yard dash times and overhand throwing velocity and batted ball velocity and this pitcher power profile for the, for the pitchers that aren't defensively showcasing. We can always pass along those numbers and metrics to you guys. If, you know, if your son doesn't hear what his 60-yard dash was, let us know and we can always follow up and make sure that you have access to those objective measurements. We don't, our, our head first team does not provide written or formal evaluations or feedback for student athletes for a handful of reasons. Primarily, we are not the college coaches and even the college coaches at programs that look very similar might be looking at very different things. So we believe it would be fairly disingenuous of us to say, Corey Spira, here's your evaluation. We think you're an X type of player. You're a Patriot League player. You're an Ivy League player. You're a NESCAC player, whatever the case may be, because we are not the coaches at those schools. So that combined with the fact that we, what we aim to do is provide a platform for players to connect directly with college coaches, and they will always be the best source of feedback for your student athletes. So if your son is interested in Cornell, 
Frank Hager is going to be the best resource and best source of feedback for if he can play at Cornell or how the Cornell program might look to a 17-year-old, 16-year-old Corey Spira. So I advise going directly to those college coaches and it's a great way to start those coaching conversations and, and instruction and also get a sense of where you stand. And also it's, you know, feedback direct from the horse's mouth as well. Our camp partner DCAT does also provide, if you'd like, uh, verbal 15, 20 minute verbal evaluations over the phone in the days following camp. So you'll learn more about that when you're on site as well, but you can certainly keep that in mind too. And there's no, you know, there's no obligations. If you just want to get a sense of uh, how you played, the DCAT staff is taking notes on every player during the offensive and defensive showcase, as well as during the games. And they are happy to verbalize that feedback to you in the days after camp as well. Um, that brings us to the end of the q and I want to make sure we respect everybody's time and, and get you out of, here, out of this digital meeting room in a, in a timely manner. As I said, this is certainly not the last or only chance that you guys have to get your questions answered. If anything comes up between now and Monday morning, feel free to find our website and shoot us a live chat, give us a call, send us an email, and we are more than happy uh, to get you all squared away. On behalf of everybody here at Head First, I, I know I speak for, for Corey and Brendan and the rest of the team when I say we are very excited to see you all face-to-face -face in just a couple of days on Long Island. Thank you for taking the time this evening.